morning after I've done my workout, made a coffee, unloaded the dishwasher, is usually around the point where I go on my couch and I have a reading session. I love starting my day with reading. It's just a really great opportunity to stay off my phone and have a little bit more of a quiet morning. For my morning reading sessions, I typically like to read nonfiction because if I read nonfiction at night, it tends to put me to sleep real fast. My brain is just not in a place where it wants to absorb new information and learn things. It's much more receptible to that in the morning. The book I'm currently reading in the nonfiction category is The Defining Decade, Why Your 20s Matter and How to Make the Most of Them Now by Meg Jay. And for me, nonfiction is most exciting when it's relevant. I feel like if you're forcing yourself to read a book in the nonfiction category that you think you should be reading but just doesn't resonate, it's harder to get into it and it's harder to stay committed. You get bored of it. But if you're reading something about a topic that feels like something you truly want to investigate, it's very exciting. So that's why I would really recommend if you are uh, trying to embrace more nonfiction in your life is to A, try and incorporate it into your schedule during a time when you are most alert, but then also be, think about the things that you are actually curious about and find books to fit those curiosities. I mentioned before how I typically buy my nonfiction books in physical form because I like to do highlighting in my nonfiction as I've done here. I know that is horrifying thought to some readers to highlight a book, but I have grown quite comfortable with it with my nonfiction books. When I read nonfiction, I don't read it as if it's a one-time thing. I assume I'm going to be back to it. So when it comes to highlighting things, I try and think about what is something that a future me might feel the need to hear or what is something that a future me is probably going to be interested in and that's where the highlighter comes into play so i highlight quotes or sentences that really feel like they click or summarize a theory really well i haven't done it in this book yet but sometimes i even whip out a pen if i feel like i read something and it reminds me of oh i remember so and so talking about um this topic or oh i want to investigate this more look into blah 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 like i'll write a note to myself but i also have recently started using post-it notes too mostly if a book has some sort of graph or table or a section a story that i i'll probably want to reference often post-it notes are great for that a book that i just recently read that I did this a lot too was in the flow and you'll see that if I open this oh yeah there is a chart there is a table oh another table and the result is something that's so much easier to go back to and I have so much especially for this book for the past few weeks this video is interrupted by a quick message from today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, before you sit there and think to yourself, Caitlin, I already know everything there is to know about Squarespace. Let me ask you a few questions. Did you know Squarespace is an easy all-in-one platform that provides you with a variety of beautiful templates to make your website look great without the help of a graphic designer? Did you know you can customize your site even further by changing fonts and colors, or that you can add in slideshows, dividers, and clickable buttons into your blog posts to make them more pleasing for potential customers. I mean, what says I'm a professional more than a clickable button on your website? It's for all these reasons and many more that I choose to use Squarespace to run my own blog, CaitlinSilva.com. I love using my site to write about topics I don't get the chance to cover in videos, post pictures of planner spreads I design, and keep you guys posted on my latest content. So if you want to join me in the blogging world, you can check out Squarespace.com today for a free trial and use the URL Squarespace.com slash Caitlin's Corner to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I've kind of touched upon already with nonfiction, my process of finding books, and it really starts with having something that I'm curious about or want to learn about. And from there, I kind of look on Amazon and Indigo in that category to see what are the most popular books and what people are saying about them. I really do read reviews before I purchase something because nonfiction books especially uh, can be pricey if I'm buying them outright. If I'm getting them from the library, then it's a little bit less of something I'm concerned about. If a person online that I follow talks about a book really highly, I typically will make note of it. I have 
a list on my Milano app that I keep track of book recommendations both from people in the virtual world and people in the offline world. And that way I have an idea when I'm at the bookstore of what books I want to investigate while I'm there. And most nonfiction books also have some sort of introduction that talk about what the book is going to really be about. There's a lot of books that will do the whole is this book for you kind of thing. Just an idea of the author's tone. Am I actually interested in the topic that they're going to talk about? Does it feel like something I want to continue reading? These are the kind of things that are going through my head. With fiction though, I find that I'm a lot more just like spontaneous. I don't really have a huge TBR of fiction books that I need to read because I buy them as I want to read them or I rent them as I want to read them. And these days where I get a lot of my fiction book recommendations are from Book Talk. Book Talk is a whole fun little place on the internet. It's basically the the book genre of TikTok, TikTokers who talk about books. And uh, there's there's always some great recommendations popping up on my For You page. I am a contemporary romance lover, so there's a lot of people that target that kind of genre. I don't know though, there's just some books that you just always hear about online, like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I just could not stop hearing the, about that on social media. So that was one great example of a book that I picked up because of the internet. Midnight Library is one that I have that I still have to read, but that one it was bought definitely because I saw it all over social. Normal People, Spanish Love Deception, that was one of my favorites from this year. The biggest shift in my reading taste over the last few years has definitely happened in the nonfiction category. I feel like I was previously someone who would always love to read a self-help book, like a general self-help book. And I still like those books. Like I'm, I feel like the 20-something book that I'm reading right now is kind of in that house. And nowadays, I, I do like to have a little bit more, I guess like especially in the last year, a little bit more targeted conversations. Going into the topic of my cycle and how it impacts my life like just focusing on that i picked up uh recently biohack your brain and then in the flow kind of inspired the vagina bible purchase the wealthy renter by alex avery has been a big favorite for me this year i also picked up a few months ago invested by danielle and phil town so yeah things have just shifted a bit and it might be because i'm getting older like i think the health one is definitely just the symptom of me realizing I'm I'm entering the second half of my 20s and I want to set myself up for success health wise so that I can go into my 30s just feeling freaking awesome. When I finish reading is when I usually go and update my Goodreads status. So I personally right now I'm using Goodreads to keep track of which books I've read, my rating for them. Sometimes I do brief reviews. Sometimes, not all the time, I'll do reading status updates as I'm reading a book. I know there are other platforms that do similar things that are emerging, so I might have to check those out as well. I told you guys I was doing this video. One of the questions I got asked a lot was, how am I liking my reading journal? And I will be fully honest with you. I love my reading journal. However, I do not use it nearly enough. How is it possible to love it and also not use it enough? Well, for one, like this is one of my notes for Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. It is multiple pages. And as great as this is, like this is going to be awesome for me to review before the next book comes out. I only find it useful for books that are part of series that are, are have lots of complicated plots. Like fantasy books really work for this. But on the other hand, like this is the note that I did for Very Sincerely Yours. And I just basically wrote some of my thoughts about it after I finished reading. Because Very Sincerely Yours is a contemporary romance. It is not a complicated plot. I don't need to be making detailed notes because I'm not even going to return to this world again because it's a one of standalone. To Sir With Love by Lauren Lane, I did this as well. Spanish Love Deception. Aside from being helpful for fantasy books, I also find it really great for nonfiction books because at the end of each chapter, I can kind of go and make a note about what the main theme was, what is the big takeaway, that sort of thing. I think when I started this journal, I had this image in my head of every book I read having notes in it uh, and a review and you know it just be this really beautiful thing and the reality is i just think that not all of the books i read need to be written about like they don't they don't necessarily deserve uh reading journal space so i've taken the pressure off in that regard but i do want to get a little bit better 
about doing a little bit more fuller reviewed thoughts and then using those notes to write up something a little bit more formal on Goodreads or on Instagram. I want to do more book sharing on Instagram and doing book reviews on there. My blog, like that sort of thing. I think when I have notes, it's much easier to craft those. I assume once I hit the year mark, I'll probably want to do like a formal video on this and do some updated uh, layouts, but uh, that's where I'm at right now. If a reading journal isn't your jam though, I do want to show you this new thing that I created, which I think these are so fun. They're little book review stickers. Here is what the skinny ones look like. And then I also have some slightly larger ones. A white design and a colorful design so I can kind of coordinate it with the book that I'm reading or that I just read. What these stickers allow you to do is when you finish a book, you can stick this at the back and give a rating. You can write down how long it took you to finish the book. On these skinny ones, you can write some quick descriptions of the book, like descriptor words. In the in the larger one, you can kind of do a few bullet points. And then there's a little section of like, would you recommend it to a friend? And I also created these from the library of Caitlin De Silva stickers that I can put on my nonfiction books or any book that I have to kind of mark it as mine. I finished reading for your self-compassion and I put it in this book and then at the back, there's the little book review sticker. I just think that's so fun. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I figure you guys are gonna be interested in these stickers, so I'll have a PDF containing all of them uh, down in the description box below, but I am very excited to use these more in conjunction with the reading journal to create a whole reading system. Thank you very much. It is the evening, and this is when the reading gets crazy it is fiction reading time so this is around the, the period of the day where i'm on the couch reading a book maybe while a show's on i also love going to bed like 30 45 minutes before my bedtime and and reading as a way of winding down i just i just find it a very great leisuring activity it's one of my favorite leisuring activities which is hence the reason why i'm able to read so many books because i genuinely will choose the joy of reading over starting a new tv show or a new movie i do love tv and movies but there's something about reading that is just so much more engaging for me most of my fiction reading happens on an e-reader and i mentioned in a vlog a while back that uh in addition to my kindle paperwhite which has been my e-reader for years i now also have a kobo aura I believe that's the name for it. My mom's old Kobo Aura. So I have both. I find e-readers to be the go-to for fiction because this year I'm at 60. Have I hit 70 books for the year? Let me look. I'm at 69 books for the year. So I want to say minimum of 50 of those are, are fiction. Probably a little bit more because I skew heavily in the fiction department. But that would be crazy to have 50 plus books a year coming into my apartment. Like I just do not physically have the space for that. So e-reading has been where it's at. I still buy physical books when it's an author that I really love or it's a series I'm already really invested into. Actually my fiction books are all on these shelves right here. And honestly, if you take a look at my Goodreads, uh, some of the covers for the books I read are best to be on an e-reader. I'll just say that. <laughs> I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me questions about my reading process, so I'm gonna answer some of them right now. How do you deal with reading slumps? Currently on one, and I can't finish a book I started in July. I'd say if the reading slump is being caused by one book in particular, don't feel guilty about putting it down and, and trying something else. I find if it's just in general, you're kind of like in a slump. I sometimes get into slumps too. I actually sometimes welcome the slump. I think a little bit of distance means that I can kind of, like distance makes the heart grow fonder. So if I'm taking a little bit of a step back from reading, it means when I come back, I'm kind of like invigorated for it again. Uh, but another alternative, if you kind of want to spark things up, is to try some variety. Try something in a genre that you don't usually read try if you are a fiction reader a non-fiction book like just throw a wild card in there and sometimes that little mix-up can do wonders how do you retain info learned in non-fiction books in school i was never that person that could read things and and just like retain it and I was always jealous of people that could because I feel like what a talent that would be to be able to read something and just never forget it. 
that is not my reality so for me i find like the best strategy to help with that is just to make it easier for me to go back to a book so that's why it's like i do the highlighting thing that's why note taking can be really helpful i wish i had a better answer though Tell me when you find out. Do you read multiple books at the same time? I think it's been pretty clear that based on this video, I always am reading typically a nonfiction book and a fiction book at the same time, but I rarely ever am doing two nonfictions or two fictions. Do you read every day? If so, how much? The how much question. I guess like if I had to say my morning reading session is usually 20 to 40 minutes and my evening bedtime reading session can be anywhere between an hour and three hours three hours on like a, a book that's like oh my goodness i cannot put it down but definitely an, an hour minimum reading at night so i guess i'm usually reading like at least an hour and a half each day that's a lot that is a lot of reading i do what makes you prefer to read than just watch tv or go on technology any medium storytelling is really great in the fact that it allows you to put yourself into someone else's shoes and someone else's perspective. And books for me, it's just, it puts you in that situation in such a more intimate way because you're, you're right there in a character's thoughts in a way that you don't always get to be with TV and movies. And I really love that. All of the characters and all of the people that I've read from in the nonfiction category, it's like you, you take these snippets from them and it helps you form your understanding of the world. And I just love how much reading allows me to broaden my perspective. And I, I notice that in how I navigate my everyday life when I'm trying to understand the opinions of other people and the viewpoints of other people. I still love TV and movies, but there is just something about being in my imagination that is the ultimate fun. How long does it normally take for you to finish a book? For a fiction book, if I'm just reading on my regular schedule of nights, it's usually two to three days. For a nonfiction, I'd say it's probably more like two weeks because I'm, I'm only reading those in the morning. Okay, we got the lights going. How do you keep it healthy instead of competing with yourself to read so much? This year I set a reading goal for myself for 100 books and I've already kind of like come to the conclusion that next year I want it to be a lot less. I don't think I need to be setting intense reading goals because I naturally am gonna read whether I have a reading goal or not. I'm going to make a point in 2022 to lower that reading goal and maybe focus more on the types of things I'm reading, like put more goals in the terms of like the content rather than the quantity, the quality versus the quantity. Yeah, there we go. What makes you not finish a book if ever? With both fiction and nonfiction, there comes a point where usually around the 40 to 50% point where if I'm really not feeling invested and not feeling like I'm getting something out of it, whether it's with fiction that I'm not feeling like pulled into the world or with nonfiction I'm not giving me value. Not to say that I have to agree with everything in the book. I think it's important to read things that you might not agree with and consume that and kind of work through why that is, why someone else has that perspective and why that's different from yours. But if I'm not like getting any value out of it, then it's like I have no qualms about saying, hey, we're gonna stop this now. Life is too short to be spending time on something that you're really not vibing with. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's no reward for pushing through a book that you are not, are not into. I love talking books. I love the fact that you guys are so invested in books. It really, it does make me feel very um, at home, this topic, because it's where, it's it's a large reason why I do what I do today. I started my book my online journey as a as a book blogger and now things have shifted a bit, but I still love bringing book talk to the channel whenever I can. It's still a very big part of who I am, and I thank you for allowing me to share that with you. If there are more book type of videos that you want to see from me, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know if you've got book suggestions so I can fill up my list with more. A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to click the link in the description box below for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. When I had my book channel, I always ended those videos by closing a book on the frame, but I have my e-reader here, so we're gonna have to do a virtual one. I'll see you guys soon. Bye guys.